So here's he a story about Brandon Marshall. Wide receiver. I want to piece it together a little bit Lisa. so I get better. Yeah, Brandon Marshall, but, you know, the people he's one of the biggest about lightning about rods in but just the NFL. God, as talented not as he was to give you on the field, he was always, as you always see, getting into right trouble. Here. He had a ton of police calls to his home. Yeah, when he was there. Domestic violence. I mean, he yeah. was like, was he, he was kind of a, a, yeah. a train wreck there. He's one of only a handful of athletes who have ever come forward and acknowledged a mental health issue. Some people do. people mention an issue or a diagnosis you know we kind of roll our eyes oh, okay so team. that's why you got in trouble okay. is it over an excuse to serve it right exactly shortly after completing his treatment program and before the start of the 2011 season marshall scheduled a news conference to reveal his diagnosis i was like sure this is what you really want to do why were you so because i didn't want people that's my child that's my child. You know what I mean? She's powerful right here. I want nobody to think my baby was crazy. Because he's not. Right. He just needed some need help. help. For so long, I've been just trying to get help. I've been seeking help. I've been talking to doctors since I've been in the NFL, and no one's ever helped. Doctors Today, my help. journey begins. What kind of responses have you gotten? from people who are a little skeptical. You definitely hear, you know, those stigmas. You'll hear, you know, go take some medicine or medicine uh, always the key. which Brandon Marshall is this, you know, uh, he's crazy or he's blaming someone else. Since his announcement, Marshall has started a foundation. He also continues to speak publicly to raise awareness on mental health issues. Borderline personality disorder, there is no medication particularly useful for it. Instead, you change said there's no brain medicine for it, but why would, why would people in power position tell them to take some medicine? Uh, change the size so of the ventricles in the brain is the same as medications can. I think this is a good idea. If you go on national TV and tell the world that you are cuckoo, your borderline personality, they're going to look at you as cuckoo. They're not going to look at you the way I look at you. You know, I said, and anything you do is going to be under the microscope from this point on. And they're going to say, aha, it's because of Brandon, his borderline personality. I knew it all the time. The person, this, this guy's cooking. And I tried to talk him out of the tree. And I'm glad it didn't Thank work. You. As his psychiatrist, I was a little anxious about this. You know, what if he goes out and gives a public statement about borderline personality disorder and the next day he ends up regressing into his old behaviors. It's not going to be a good picture. If he'd asked me, I would have advised him against it. Nonetheless, his having done it, you know, is a wonderful thing for the field, for mm -hmm. all of mental illness, but particularly for borderline personality the disorder, which you, huh? is amongst the most stigmatized of mental illnesses. And the pride the gratitude and I told for another day you still don't even know what you've done you have no idea what you've done and what you're doing for people I went and got some help for my issues too I'm proud of myself I stopped recently stopped smoking I stopped drinking so I've been doing some work on myself thanks to my son I mean he always said mommy is thanks to God no it's cuz this is big this is really big and I'm just proud. You've done. We have a whole community, 88 million of them. Line three, yeah! <laughs> and I that's really awesome. believe that's my purpose in life, to bridge the gap in the mental health community. You played a big part in springing the leak in the darkness. You realize that you helped save my life. The only reason why I'm standing here today is to use my story to help others who may Everything suffer from what I suffer from. I'm Very sorry, thankful that Brandon went public. Life. We often say if it touches one life, it's, it's worth like it. Hope. No, it's touched Megan's life, but actually it's touched mine, mm -hmm. Penny, and her sister, Delaney, and all of her family. It's touched many, many, many lives. What I learned is football is my platform to fulfill my purpose. And I think this is my purpose. Got it. I remember taking a flight from Denver to Atlanta, and I had my Bible, and uh, I guess yeah, I was trying to read it, life at the right time. you know, and there was this lady, she said, are you a Christian? 
why would she ask this? Like, isn't it obvious? But the way she asked in her facial expression made me really dig a little deeper. She saw, you know, how hesitant I was. And she said, you know what? Just pray for clarity. So for four years, I began to pray for clarity every single day. I took something up there to Boston, to Waltham, Massachusetts, that I don't think anyone else in those groups took with them. And that was Jesus Christ. Every single day, every single night, I got on my knees. And I just uh, begged God for him to give me clarity. The same prayer. After a month and a half being up there, you know, it was like, man, I'm feeling something I never felt before. God's revealing himself to me in, in ways he never, you know, revealed himself to me. I remember having worship in my car by myself, listening to praise music. It was like, this is amazing. Like, I'm driving down the highway with my hands up. Like, what is this that I'm feeling? Like, I've been praying clarity for four years. I've been praying for the cycle to be broken for four years. And it's happening. So what I want to touch on is that everybody is not qualified to give us advice. And what Brandon was talking about was that, you know, he talks to all these doctors and stuff like that. Now you think about it in the NFL, right? They're going to recommend the best or whatever like that. But sometimes people get so caught up in their title, um, how many degrees they got or their status on Facebook. You know, if they're, or they're a celebrity, even if they're a YouTube, um, sensation, Facebook sensation, whatever. I mean, we still have to use discernment and see, okay, is that good? You know what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with people getting education or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? But you know, like, you know, so like the uh, psychiatrist said, you know, um, you know, if he would have asked me, I was anxious. The Bible says be anxious for nothing. I mean, that's what the scripture says. Let's, let's go to it. Philippians four, four and six. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything and by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your, your, your request be made known to God. Verse seven. Then the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and mind through Jesus, through Christ Jesus. So, I mean, he said even himself that, you know what I'm saying? He prayed for clarity. And, the, and you heard the psychiatrist. Now, don't get me wrong. Like, he got these degrees and, and everything like that. Like, he said, you know, look at what he done. So, if he would have asked him, what should I do about this? He would have told him out of his anxious, you know what I'm saying? Don't get me wrong. Like I said, the doctor... Um, you know, the psychiatrist was, was, uh, uh, meant well, you know what I'm saying? He wasn't trying to do anything, but even in a person meaning well, it can do more damage. You know what I'm saying? Imagine if he wouldn't did that, that girl wouldn't have been saved. I mean, you heard it right there. And, you know, so, I mean, so at this point, you know, he was, uh, you know, playing for the Miami Dolphins, going through a rough time and stuff like that. And you know what I'm saying? And people were telling him like, listen, you know, if you go through, you know, if you, if you do this, you're going to commit career suicide. You're never going to play in the NFL again or whatever like that. So he was playing for the Dolphins. So sometimes God will isolate you, um, to get you so he can talk to, you know, Job 36 and 15, it says that God gets our attention through adversity and everything like that with the things that we're going through. So, you know, but, but God told him to do that. And when he did that, you know, he ended up, um, coming back to the, uh, he ended up coming back to the dolphins and then he got traded to the bears. Um, and then he ended up signing, um, a three-year deal for like $30 million. And then he used the million dollars of his own to go for that efforts to help other people. I mean, he even said himself, uh, 10% of all the cases that had borderline personality d disorder and then suicide. So, you know, and like one time, you know, when he was younger, he said he asked his dad, like, dad, I think there's something wrong with me. And what did his dad say? Boy, ain't nothing wrong with you. Get out of here. Yeah, we've heard that a lot of time. You know, sometimes people will put their self in, in your shoes and they will give you advice based off what they would do. And the, and it could be more dangerous. You know what I'm saying? Excuse me. So I'm trying to get better at these videos so I can, you know, edit them a little better. But, um, you know, um. You know, um, what he did when he played for clarity, you know, Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, it says, trust in the Lord um, with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. So as he was acknowledging God, God was directing his path, even even through that. See, a lot of times, you know, it's hard to see in chaos, you know what I'm saying? And like, so, you know, he didn't understand his purpose at that time, but he had a platform. His per his, his platform was not the purpose. The platform can be used to help with the purpose. And that's what it was, you know what I'm saying? With that, you know what I'm saying? I tell people all the time, it's not the hand you're dealt. 
It's how you play the hand. You can have a great poker hand or, you know what I'm saying? And you could just jack it up. Like, literally, you could just mess it up. Like, I mean, for, for those that play, that play spades, like, you can have the greatest spades hand of all time and you can renege and get your books taken or you can just play it stupid or whatever, you know what I'm saying? But it's how you play the hand. And you know what I'm saying? And God wants to show you how to play your hand daily. A lot of times we look at our life like, oh, well, so if I was, you know, dealt this hand, I'll be like this. There are some folks that are born rich, you know, with, 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 with a spoon in their mouth, you know what I'm saying? Nothing talking about them, but just saying, I'm just giving an example. So they're born like that and end up on drugs or end up having suicidal thoughts and stuff like that. I mean, or committing suicide, like, and it's sad, you know what I'm saying? Cause some people think that that's what happiness is, but it's not, you know what I'm saying? And yes, that's bring things, but even through that separation, like he was separated for three months because, you know, if, if you, if you watch the story, I mean, you can actually go on, uh, YouTube and you can put in, um, Brandon Marshall 30 for 30, um, part one and part two, or you can do Brandon Marshall, um, um, a football life. And that will give you the whole thing. I just wanted to cut some clips, you know what I'm saying? And kind of show you pretty much what I was trying to talk about. But you know what I'm saying? If you go, um, and look at that, it will tell you the whole story, but in that separation, you know what I'm saying? It was to make his relationship better. Like, you know, we think like, well, well, you know, why would God separate him? Cause sometimes God has to separate you so he can get your attention. You know what I'm saying? And so when the separation, he went and got this, the, the right help that he got. He kept Jesus with him the whole time. And look, he has a, you know what I'm saying? The, you know, the marriage has prospered, you know what I'm saying? Listen, he even helped his mom, you know what I'm saying? His mom said, listen, you made me want to be better. And so listen, if you find your purpose, your purpose will help other people. And this is why people have midlife crisis in life because they don't understand their purpose. And people look at, you know, and then they try to look at, okay, well, how can God use all this stuff for my good? He can, but we have to be careful who we listen to. Like I said, again, just because they have a status or they have a title or they on Facebook and have a, a you know, saying whatever, you know, this many likes, that doesn't mean we should listen to them. You know what I'm saying? We have to use discernment, you know, so we got to pray and just ask God to show us because listen, if some people get anxious, you know what I'm saying? We have to be careful who we're listening to. And that's what happens. You know what I'm saying? He could have said, you know what? I'm just going to listen to these doctors. They were just telling him, listen, just take some medicine. Or which Brandon Marshall am I talking to? What are you trying to say? You're, you hold a position. So you're supposed to talk to me in the way you're supposed to help me. Not say which Brandon Marshall am I talking to? Like, you know what I'm saying? That, that, that's crazy. But that's what people do. They get to a certain level sometimes. Some people, not all, they get to a certain level. They just say whatever they want to say. I'm like, well, since I'm a doctor, I can just say this. Or I'll just prescribe him some medicine. You know what I'm saying? Which is, that's the big money thing anyway. But I'll get in that another day. But just imagine, we have to be careful. So the, the lesson we have to learn is, you know, we got to be careful who we listen to. Because, you know, sometimes we feel like just because they've, they've achieved a certain status, you know, we should just listen to what they said. And they can be clearly like, you know, they can be clearly way off, like way out of the ballpark and not even out of bounds. And, you know, thinking that they know and they really don't. And, you know, one thing I've learned is that if somebody come to me asking me about something and if I don't know anything, I will tell them that I won't try to sit here and make up something like, oh, well, so, 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 so. no, if I don't know, I'll, I'll go find out or I'll go ask somebody. You know what I'm saying? Especially if it's not my level of expertise or something like that. You know, I'll go ask somebody. But there are people that just, just want to say something and just will say something. And that's when you got to be careful about that. You know what I'm saying? And so I just wanted to tell you that. And hopefully this, like I said, blesses you unless you start to use discernment. Because just because people have, um, you know, a title or whatever, a certain amount of degrees or a certain level or a certain status does not mean that they are qualified to give us advice in certain areas. So I'll give you an example. They may be very good with learning how to invest money. They may be a millionaire, so they can teach you or tell you how to invest money. If they are bad in relationships, that listen, they can't give you relationship advice. They can only tell you about how to invest money because if you ask them, they will tell you based off of their experiences. And is and if they haven't learned any lessons, then it's not going to work. It's not going to work for you. So I'm definitely going to teach you on that. I'll probably talk about it again tomorrow or something like that. But we'll see whatever God lead me to do. But just want to tell y'all, love y'all. God bless and hope y'all got that.